Sacred Sunday or whatever day it is that you're seeing this to you, Rina here. Um, I am sitting under, I've shown it to you once in the past. Um, this is called a Kadipatta tree. My mom planted it and um, it's hard to see maybe, but it's, I'll show you one. See, now it's huge. Um, and my mom had planted it just when it was super tiny. I got cut off the last time, I think, in a rainstorm from <laughs> sharing it with you. Um, and it's cool because I eat from this tree. We use it as seasoning a lot in our cooking. I say we as if I cook. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm trying to learn um, uh, slowly and patiently. And thankfully, I come from a long line of... Um, career women who did not start out cooking a ton um, and learned over time um, and have um, partners who share in the cooking too and families so I'm learning and not down on myself for it but it smells really good and it might be one of the first times that I've spent this long sitting under it it's really amazing how it can awaken your senses <clears throat> um, so today is Sunday and I like to tune out on Sundays and interestingly sitting here practicing um, is something I also needed so I was not going to be too tight and rigid of shut off everything and, and be quiet today so it felt right today um, but it is really nice to offer yourself a chance to rest and to pick a day you know I sort of picked the day that is conducive to taking time off when a lot of other people are off and that way I'm not missing a lot of things and also able to stick to my rest but it might be a different time or amount of time or day for you and I just wanted to you know acknowledge and honor that it's hard to do but when we can get into that practice we can leave the connection and find peace in the disconnection instead of anxiety so when you think about it, when is the last time that you left your phone at home or you turned it off completely? Um, you know, and before yoga, as we practiced in studios or in ashram or in nature, it would be one of those places that was, let's turn off the phone. You, you usually do. And interestingly, now during this period, we have our phones on and that's the way that um, it's phone or device that we're actually practicing and sharing as a community. So it's important to then take the ownership in the other direction, right? Where now the yoga experience involves technology, that once the yoga experience happens, to remind yourself that time off of device is extraordinarily helpful and can just help you clear what feels bad at first, the mm of the mind, takes a little time you notice it it's more visible and then you start to relax into it so that's that's generally my spiel coming from a very um, from education reform background I have pre-k to 12 educator and educator of educators um, there's so much good intention and without the priority of being whole in your vessel first it can soon turn and transform into burnout. And um, I'd like to help, <laughs> empathize and help. <laughs> so if you'd like, you can join me in a short practice right now. You can sit up tall, wherever you are. Maybe you're standing, <clears throat> ideally not driving. <sighs> Simply start by noticing the physical body. So when we think about this sharira, sharira is like a body, a sheath. So physical sheath. Tuning into that is often easier than coming right into the mind because our mind is all over here, right? But here's our physical body. Do you have any tension pain in the knees? You can even name it, right? How are your feet today? What about the shoulders and the neck, the jaw? <clears throat> what about your ears and ear canals, your throat? And what about the eyes? Do the eyes want to stay open? Do they feel good if they're closed? I 
And then those areas that are especially sensitive but also often used, um, the hands and the mouth, the lips, the tongue. This is in the sensory motor homunculus, right, which is an outline of the map of the brain where these are highly sensitive, fine motor skills. When we write, when we speak, when we taste something, very, very active areas, and they tend to carry tension. So can you now start to transform by opening the hands wide? We've done this maybe in one of the practices I've done here before. Really nice and wide, not with strain. Take in a deep breath with it. As you breathe out, relax the hands. Breathe in. Widen the hands, the fingers. Soften the shoulders as you also open the heart. Exhale. Let the hands relax. Breathe in. Continuing same. Hands and breath. Exhale. Hands, breath, chest relaxes. Two more times, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, gentle retention, breathe out. Good. Now continue to breathe naturally on your own. Noticing how you might feel differently, maybe yes, maybe no. And I get the pleasure of this karipatta tree here, the smell of it, so good. It's like this lemony, it's like a lemony, cedary, I'm like doing the pretentious <laughs> wine tasting thing, but it, it brings out all of these colors actually of taste. Relax the shoulders, open, close the jaw, breathe in deeply, breathe out. Now I'm making movements with my face and jaw, you do as you like, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Twice more, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out. Blink the eyes open if they're closed, breathe naturally and normally. Good. Notice how you feel. Can you see if you can step behind the eyes, behind the mind? Can you observe your thinking as you're sitting here? And one of my favorite teachers, Eknath Ishwaran, who is now on the mind because my aunt um, in India just mentioned him. Um, Eknath Ishwaran is a really lovely teacher who brought a lot of yoga teachings um, to the West and he, in modern day, and um, he does this practice with meditation of asking your mind, what am I thinking of? What am I thinking of? And you'll find that by asking this question, by stepping behind the thought, you might be like, actually, what am I thinking of? And you actually will have a taste, a smell of spaciousness and quiet. So maybe close the eyes if you'd like to join me, just for a brief moment, soften the jaw, the eyeballs rest in the sockets. Maybe they turn inward a little bit upward toward the third eye point, this wisdom place. And for me, I feel tension the way I'm crossing my legs as habit, so I'm aware of that and I'm just gonna switch the crossing. Maybe there's a similar habit, different, that you want to adjust, balance. You can try this meditation of what am I thinking about? What am I thinking about? What am I thinking about?
Take the hands, bring them together if you want. You can rub them together just to reconnect. Feel the heat, the sensation. Blink the eyes open and breathe comfortably fully. You can stretch the hands away if you want. Cross the fingers opposite way. And if you find yourself maybe wanting more, right? Like, oh, I wish we'd stayed in that meditation. That's lovely. <laughs> maybe you were ready to stop too. That's also fine. But if you felt like, oh, this could have gone a little longer um, in the meditation space, I was just starting to feel that. That's good. That's nice to want to re-engage. And so you can do it again now, or you can wait, try again tomorrow. That taste, that glimpse of that spaciousness, that feeling of non-think, of taking like a magnifying glass and asking like what is the thought and you realize you're looking out into something that is rather vast um, and it's a relief it's a relief from from what we have going on a lot of the time so with our hands on our phones on our computers you know I think we all relate on that I I don't think I've met a single person who would deny that they'd love a break from that sensation of, um, of technology right so I think yeah it's a good thing, meditation. I hope that you had a nice time practicing with me. Hope you can smell the karipatha through the experience. And I wish you a good rest of your weekend. Tuning out. You can turn off the phone maybe a little bit. Airplane mode it. And I'll see you again hopefully soon.